and Stephen Lewis. Let's talk about the fantastic beast, The Crimes of Grindelwald. It's in theaters on Friday. It's the continuation from The Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Brought to us by, of course, the great J.K. Rowling, who has made quite the financial and entertainment empire out of The Boy Wizard. Now, this one continues from the first movie, which I'll be honest, I have not seen the first Fantastic Beast all the way through. I am not a Harry Potter fanatic like so many people are when I was in uh, my screening Last night, there were people that were full-blown dressed up in costume, which is always fun to see, but I've never really been that much on the Harry Potter train. I've enjoyed the movies, never read the books, um, but they do definitely have their place in American pop culture these days, and people love them, so let's get right into it. Uh, This brings back Eddie Redmayne's character from the first one, Newt. Uh, He's the protagonist, the main protagonist, if you will. And this also brings back Dumbledore, played by Jude Law, the younger Dumbledore. Only this time, they're trying to stop one of the most powerful wizards on the world. That would be Grindelwald, played by one Johnny Depp. Uh, They go on a quest to kind of stop him from taking a a very powerful young wizard who doesn't really know what he is yet and letting him uh, destroy the human world so that the wizards can kind of rule over it. Johnny Depp feels like his character Grindelwald feels like the wizards have been doing it all wrong and there's a better way to go and they're going to challenge that authority. And what I loved about it, J.K. Rowling does a great job of tying it back to the Harry Potter world, but introducing characters that you love. Eddie Redmayne plays Newt. He's awkward, but he's kind of fun to watch. He's the hero that's, you know, not the typical hero that you would expect because he's not the strongest guy in the room and he's not the best looking guy in the room. But he's got heart, and that's something that definitely shines through in this one. You get a little more past history about uh, Grindelwald and Dumbledore. And, there, you know, Harry J.K. Rowling has come out for a while and said that... Dumbledore is actually gay and well this one they kind of allude to that without really alluding that but there is a nice nod to what she said there and what I love about the Harry Potter movies whether you've read the books or whether you're a fanatic or not just the overall world that they create and for two and a half three hours of your time then you get encompassed into that world and you have fun with it I mean this definitely sets up the obvious third movie in this trilogy but it's definitely worth the watch. I think it's going to dominate the box office. It does have some competition this week. Of course, you've got the family side of things with Instant Family with Mark Wahlberg. Uh, you've also got some great movies like Bohemian Rhapsody that are still hanging on out there and the Oscar buzz that's around A Star is Born. So definitely it's fair share of competition, including The Grinch last week. So even in the family world, there's some competition. But I think this week definitely belongs to Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. If you're a Harry Potter fan, uh, definitely jump right in. You'll love it. If you're a non-Harry Potter fan or a novice, you can pretty much watch it and figure out what's going on without being too much in-depth into the movies. But I give it a solid B. Won't call it my favorite movie, but again, like I said, I'm not the Harry Potter fanatic that some people are. Definitely worth checking out and catch it now because sooner or later, Wreck-It Ralph is going to break the internet, and then before we know it, it'll be Christmas and Aquaman swims in the theaters. So worth the extra coin to shell out to see it on the big screen. Definitely in the theater, and remember, while you're in the theater, shh, no talking, please.